In the last lesson, we have learned the fundamentals of shape layers in After Effects, but there is a very important component of shape layer that you need to have a proper grasp of to unlock its full potential, and that is shape strokes. And you can create a lot of unique styles with stroke layers, and you are only limited by your imagination. And in this lesson 10 of this After Effects series, you are going to learn everything about the shape strokes in After Effects. So without any further delay, let's jump right into it. First, let's check out the basic properties of a stroke. Now, inside the shape layer, we have contents, and inside contents, we have shape 1. And inside shape 1, first we have the path, and then we have stroke, and we have few options under stroke. So, we're going to check out one by one. The first one is color. With this, you can change the color of the stroke, and I'm going to keep it white for now. The next one is opacity. With this, you can change the transparency of the stroke. Let's keep it 100%. Then we have stroke width. So you can also change the stroke width from here as well. So I'm going to keep it 60 pixels for now. Now the next one is line cap. Right now, it's butt cap. By default, it is going to be in butt cap when you create the shape for the first time. Now, if I change it to rounded cap, it's going to change the tip of the stroke and give it a rounded tip. And if I change it to the third option, which is projecting cap, it's going to again give a sharp corner. Now, there is a difference between butt cap and projecting cap. If I change it back to butt cap, you can see the length decreased. But if you change it to projecting cap, it is going to add some extra area at the tip of the stroke. Now, I'm going to keep it rounded cap for now. The next one is line join. By default, it's going to be in meter join. Now, if I change it to rounded join, it's going to give us the rounded corners wherever we have sharp corners on the stroke layer. And let's change it to the third option, which is bevel join. It's going to give a cutout of the sharp corners. So right now, I'm going to keep the rounded join. Next, we have dashes. Right now, we don't have anything under the dashes. But if we click on this add button, it's going to add some properties. The first one is dash. Then we have offset. From dash, we can increase or decrease the length of the dash. So if we increase the value here in dash, it's going to increase the length of the dash. And if we decrease the value, it is going to decrease the length of the dash. So let's keep it 200 for now. And if we click on the add button one more time, we're going to add gap property in under dashes. With gap, we can increase or decrease the gap between the dashes. Now, if you click on the add button one more time, we're going to add another dash. So right now we have two different dash with two different lengths. And from here, we can vary the length of the dashes. And if you click on the add button one more time, we can change the gap between the dashes of the second variety of the dash. And we can further add more variety of dashes and gaps. But right now we are going to keep only two variety of dashes. And with the offset property, we can offset the dashes. And animate dashed line like this. Below the dashes property, we have taper and wave. To understand it better, let's check it out on this shape layer. So let's open taper under stroke. From taper, we can add some variation in the stroke width. From the start length, we can decrease the stroke width from the start and from the end length, we can decrease the stroke width from the end. And after decreasing the start and the end length, with start width, we can increase the width from the start and from end width, we can increase the width from the end. With start is, we can ease out the stroke from the start and with end is, we can ease out the stroke from the end. Now, under waves, First, we have amount. If we increase the amount percentage, we can add the wave. Then we have wavelength. With this, we can increase or decrease the wavelength. And then we have phase. With this, we can animate the wave. Let's add a keyframe on phase and let's jump on to next 60 frame. And let's add one full rotation. And we have added some wave animation on our stroke layer. And you can use this property to animate smoke or hair. And now we're going to check out the most important shape modifiers with strokes. Number one is trim paths. So here we have a curved shape stroke that I have created with the pen tool. And it has a stroke width of 35 pixels. Now to add a shape modifier, open the layer and beside contents, 
we have a add button if we click on it we get all the options for the shape modifier or select the layer and at the top here beside strokes here we get the add button if we click on it we get the exact same options over here now we're going to add trim parts so here it is click on it and here we have the trim parts added in our shape stroke now inside trim path we have three options the first one is start then end and then offset with start we can add a drawing effect from the start from end we can add a drawing effect from the end and from offset we can offset the shape stroke like this throughout the shape path and in almost all the cases trim paths is used only in the shape stroke turning off the fill of the shape layer now let's see what we can do with the trim paths so let's keep the end 100% for now let's add keyframe on start end and offset let's jump on to next 8 frame and let's add all three keyframes and at the start i'm going to keep the end completely zero on the eighth frame i'm going to decrease the end a little bit let's give it 45 and then let's jump on to next eight frames again and let's add keyframe and let's delete this middle keyframe from the offset here in the offset i'm going to move the stroke and then i'm going to give the start value 45 so if i decrease the start value from here it is going to decrease the visible length of the stroke and if i keep it 45 the stroke will be completely gone select the keyframe press f9 to erase the keyframes and let's select this middle keyframe and press and hold the control key and click on it to convert the easiest keyframe into linear keyframe so we're going to keep this keyframes linear let's jump onto the motion graph editor of the end property and we're going to start the animation fast so we're going to make the motion graph at the start stiff same for the offset let's add some stiffness at the start of the animation now let's check out our animation and we can go even further by duplicating the layer, changing the colors and offsetting the layer to add an effect like this. And when you have multiple ships inside a single layer, if you select a specific ship and then add a modifier such as a trim path, you are going to add the ship modifier inside that ship. And now if we change the value, it is only going to affect that particular ship. But if we select the entire layer and then click on add and then add trim parts and then change the value under the trim parts it is going to affect all the three ships and it is and it is not only valid for trim parts it is also valid for the other ship modifiers as well now it is only going to affect all the three layers if the ship modifier is below all the three ship layers if i select the trim path and put it above ship one it is only going to affect ship two and ship three and if I place it above ship 2, it is only going to affect the ship 3. And when you have applied trim paths on all the ship layers at the same time, you get two different options. You can either animate it simultaneously or individually. If I select individually, it is going to affect the ship one by one. And the sequence will be the exact sequence in which you have drawn the ship path. Number two is twist. Here we have a straight line with a stroke width of around 38 pixels. Now let's open the layer and click on the add button. And here we have twist. Let's add it. After adding the twist, you can notice that the straight line is a little bit curved. Now if I open twist, here we get two options. The first one is angle. If we keep it zero, it is going to be completely straight. If we increase it, we can twist the stroke like this and if we go negative then it is going to be twisted in the negative direction with the center point you can change the center point of the twist but in most of the cases you would want to keep it exactly at the center now let's check out how we can use this modifier so let's keep the angle zero and add a keyframe and let's add a keyframe on stroke width now let's jump on to next 60 frame so around two second and we are going to twist it in the positive direction let's give it around 1800 and let's increase the stroke width to cover up the entire screen 
and at the start we can give the stroke width completely zero and let's easy is the keyframe jump onto the motion graph editor and let's select the speed graph and we are going to decrease the ease at the start a little bit and increase the ease at the end a little bit and now you have a hypnotizing animation like this or you can go even further and duplicate the layer multiple times and vary the stroke color to get something like this you can even use the twist on fill the same way number three is wiggle path let's open the layer and click on add and here we have wiggle path click on it inside wiggle path we have few options let's check it out one by one with size you can increase the size of the wiggle waves let's keep it 200 now if you preview it you can see that the waves are wiggling at a certain speed so next we have detail from here we can increase or decrease the detailing so let's keep it 25 next is point from here we can change the style of the waves right now we have corners if we click on smooth it is going to have smooth corners next we have wiggles per second from here we can increase or decrease the speed so let's keep it two for now next we have correlation from here we can increase or decrease the complexity so i'm going to keep it 50 percent for this one with temporal and the spatial phase you can change the phase of the waves and random seed changes the oscillation randomly and after animating the random seed, you will notice some jerk in the animation due to sudden change in the speed of the waves. Number four is zigzag. So here we have a line stroke. Let's add zigzag. Click on the add button and here we have zigzag exactly at the bottom of this queue. Let's add it. Inside zigzag, we have three options. The first one is size. If we increase the size, as the name suggests, you can add zigzag to the straight line. The more you increase the size, you can increase the amplitude of the zigzag. So let's keep it 40. Next is ridges per segment. With this, we can increase the zigzag or the waves or decrease it. Third one is points. Right now, corner is selected. Let's select smooth. And now we have a wave pattern. And you can use zigzag in lots of ways. One way is you can add trim path and adjust the start and the end value under trim path. And now with offset, you can animate some wave animation. Maybe you can use it for water animation or something like that. Number five, offset path. Here we have a curved stroke path of stroke width around four pixels. Let's add offset path. Click on add button. And here we have the offset path option. Now, as we have added the offset path, you can notice how the stroke has changed to outline stroke. Inside offset path, we have few more options. With amount, we can scale up or scale down the amount of offset. Then we have line join. Here we have few options for the cap style. Right now it's meter join. If we select round join, it is going to have a rounded cap. And from the meter limit, we can adjust the range of the meter. And from copies, we can increase the number of copies or add number of copies of offset stroke. And with copy offset, you can basically scale up the area of offset. There are two ways we can use it. One way is if we keep the trim paths below the offset, we are applying the trim paths on the shape layer with the offset path. And if I keep the trim path above the offset, that means we are applying offset on the shape layer with the trim paths. So let's keep the trim paths below and let's check it out. So adjust the start and the end value. You can add outline drawing effect for this offset path. And if you put trim paths above the offset, that means you are applying offset on the shape layer with trim paths. Now you get a different effect. All right, so that is it for this video. In the next lesson, we're going to learn how to use repeaters in After Effects. So if you like the video, then make sure to hit the like button. If you have any doubt regarding the techniques, then make sure to comment down below. I would be happy to help you out. And if you're here for the first time, then make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification button to stay notified for all the future updates. Until then, goodbye.